Welcome to the first slide on inverse Laplace. Now, inverse Laplace is usually done direct from something called a lookup table, rather than doing lots of detailed and complicated integrals and other techniques. So we're going to focus um, on the use of the lookup table. The technique is summarized next. First, you rearrange the existing Laplace transform into forms which are in the table already. Once you've done that, inverse Laplace is done by inspection because you simply match the form to something in the table. We're going to use some examples to show how this is done, but first we're going to show you the basic lookup table so you know what it looks like and what sort of forms you are going to be expecting. So here we go. First signal, the most common signal of all, is what's called a unit step input. Often people call it H of T for a heavy side step function. This has got a Laplace transform 1 over S. Some other signals which have a similar form of de denominator are a ramp T or, you know, something of the form T to the power K. You notice the ramp is 1 over S squared, T to the power K is K factorial over S to the K plus 1. Next group of signals are exponentials, something like e to the minus a t, and these take the form 1 over s plus a. The next group are pure sinusoids, sine omega t, cos omega t, and you can see these have the Laplace transforms omega over s squared plus omega squared, or s over s squared plus omega squared. And the final group of signals are decaying sinusoids of the form e to the minus a t sine omega t or e to the minus a t cos omega t. And again, you'll see these transforms at the bottom. So this is the main table. And though somebody could argue there might be a few other forms, these are the most common forms and the ones that we will be using. So here's an example, just to get you started, of how you might use the lookup table. Let's assume you have a transform x of s equals 1 over s plus 2. Now, you want to match this to a form in the table. Now, to be honest, this example is almost too simple because it's already done. The format in the table is 1 over s plus a, and you will have noticed, I'll put it here, 1 over s plus a was equivalent to e to the minus a t. That's what you had in the table. So here, 1 over s plus 2, you can see the 2 is equivalent to a, and therefore you get x of t equals e to the minus 2t. What about the next example? If you have 6 over s squared plus 2s, you'll notice that this does not appear, this form does not appear in the table. So the first thing to do is to rearrange that into two forms which do occur in the table. So here they are, 3 over s and minus 3 over s plus 2. Now once you've got it into that form, we can look in the table, we can see 3 over s is in the table, and 3 over s plus 2 is in the table. And so you end up with z of t equals 3 minus 3e to the minus 2t. And for the final example, which is done straight away, you can see I've got h of s equals 1 over s plus 1, s plus 2. I can rearrange this into two forms, both of which are in the table, that is 1 over s plus 1 and minus 1 over s plus 2. And having done that, I get straight away that the underlying time domain signal is e to the minus t, e to the minus 2t. So I've done that very quickly, but hopefully you've got the key point. You take your original transform, you reorganize it into the structures which are in the table, and then you can do inverse Laplace by inspection just by looking at the table. So what do we need in order for this technique to work? Right, the first thing we need to be able to do is identify the key forms in the table that contribute to the current transform. And partially that's just familiarity with the table itself. And you'll see it wasn't very big. Next, we need to use a partial fraction technique to separate the existing transform into the types of form which are in our table. And that's what we will begin um, in the next video. We simply use the table to do the inverse Laplace transform of each of the structures we've got once we've done partial fractions. Now, before we go any further, we will emphasize that it's 
critical that you are able to factorize polynomials. If you're a bit unsure about how to factorize polynomials, I suggest you go to the suite of videos on polynomials and ensure you can do that and then come back to this suite of videos. A few reminders. You need to know what we mean by terminologies like pole and zero. So a pole is the root of the denominator, a zero is the root of the numerator. Again, you'll see there's a brief slide on this at the end of the polynomial suite of videos. Now, when you're doing inverse Laplace, actually the zeros don't have much of a role. It's the poles which are most important and which characterize the terms in the lookup table. The first step in an inverse Laplace procedure is to identify the transfer function poles. And so before you proceed beyond this point, you need to be confident in calculating transfer function poles. So again, that's covered in the last few um, videos in the polynomial and factor series. So now let's look at the structures that appeared in the lookup table. And what we want to do is group these so we know what sort of structures we're looking for. So first of all, you see there's three terms here. 1 over s, 1 over s squared, um, k factorial over s to the k plus 1. Now these all have a similar structure because they have roots or other poles at the origin. s has one pole at the origin, s squared has two poles at the origin, s to the k plus 1 has k plus 1 poles at the origin. These correspond to signals of the form t to the power k, t to the naught for a step, t to the 1 for a ramp, and t to the k for an s k plus 1. The next structure you'll see is things like 1 over s plus a or 1 over s minus b. These correspond to simple exponentials. If you see something which has got a denominator, s squared plus omega squared, these correspond to pure sinusoids. The change in the numerator simply dictates whether it's a cosine or a sine, but the underlying form of signal is the same. It's a sinusoid. And finally, if you see something like this, which has got a denominator s plus a all squared plus omega squared, then that corresponds to a decaying sinusoid. And you'll notice, if you look, this form has purely, or rather has complex roots. If you try to solve for the roots of s plus a all squared plus omega squared, you will see that the solution for the roots is complex. Now, Let's get on with inverse Laplace. First, we're going to give a summary of the key steps, and this video will then focus mainly on step one. So step one, identify the denominator factors, r subscript i of s, and these need to be quadratic if the roots are complex, but obviously if the roots are real, then these would not be quadratic, they would be simple linear forms. Steps we won't do in this video, but come later, is once you've got the um, poles or the denominator factors, then you need to identify suitable terms ci of s so that you can write your transfer function as a partial fraction. That's given here. That's the sort of partial fraction you're looking for. And you will need to identify suitable terms ci of s. Once you've got to that stage, the last bit, you just look at the table and do inverse Laplace directly on each of the terms in turn. So inverse Laplace of C1 over R1, inverse Laplace of C2 over R2, and so on. So I'll repeat, this video is focusing on step one, and we'll revisit step two and step three in the following videos. So inverse Laplace, step one. First of all, and aside, you note that all the terms in the lookup table have denominators of a standard format, and the denominator is higher order than the numerator. Okay? If this simple check fails, there's something wrong, and you need to go and uh, start again. So if anyone gives you a transfer function where the numerator is higher order than the denominator, then you simply go back and say, no can do, um, let's start again. Right. Having done that simple check, um, what we're trying to do is make the um, original transfer function, here it is, q over p, into this partial fraction form. Okay, c1 over r1 plus c2 over r2 plus dot 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 up to cn over rn. And the first step in this is to find suitable ri. We'll get to ci later. Now I hope it's fairly clear to you that we can write p equals 
R1 times R2 all the way up to Rn. So in other words, the first step is to factorise the denominator or to find the pulse. So all we're asking you to do here is factorise a polynomial. If you're not comfortable with factorisation, go and look at the videos on factorising polynomials. So some examples of step one. And all we're doing, we keep saying it, is factorising the denominator. So if I look at G, you'll see the pole polynomial is given as s squared plus 3s plus 2. And by inspection, I can write this as s plus 1 times s plus 2. Or you could put r1 equals s plus 1 and r2 equals s plus 2. So it's as simple as that. If I look at h of s, you'll see in this case the pole polynomial is s squared plus 4s, which by inspection I can write as s times s plus 4, and therefore you've got r1 equals s, r2 equals s plus 4. And finally, if I look at m, you'll see I've got p equals s cubed plus 4s squared plus 3s, which has got a factor s, which I can take out by inspection. So I get s into s squared plus 4s plus 3. And then I can rewrite this as s, s plus 3, s plus 1. And so I've got r1 equals s, r2 equals s plus 3, and r3 equals s plus 1. A few more examples. So how do we factorise the following um, transfer functions? So in particular, how do we find the poles? So again, we've got p equals s cubed plus 10s squared plus 25s. And you'll see I'm ignoring the numerator in all of these. And this one I can factorise again by inspection is s times s plus 5 all squared. So interestingly here, there is a double root at minus 5. Now we didn't cover that in the table, that's one of the extra special forms, but um, we note it here. What about L? In this case we've got P equals S cubed plus 25 S, which I can take out an S, and then that leaves me with S squared plus 25. And you'll notice this takes the form s squared plus omega squared, which is one of the forms we had in the table for a sinusoid. And the final example down here, it's already partially factorised for you. You've got p equals s plus 1 into s squared plus 2s plus 5. Now, what you'll notice, or hopefully you'll notice, is this quadratic bit has got complex roots. So we're not going to try and simplify it anymore, and we're just going to write r1 equals s plus 1, and r2 equals s squared plus 2s plus 5. Right, a final remark before this video finishes um, on stability. The pole polynomial P of S is often known as the characteristic equation because it characterizes the behaviors that come out of the process. And it's also useful for determining stability of a process because the system dynamics or the convergence depends solely on the roots Ri of S. In, in simple terms, we're not going to cover it particularly here, but if you want stability, then the roots must all be in the left half plane. And the concept of the left half plane was again covered in the videos on factorization.